Something told me it was over. Oh, sometimes. Etta James is a name that resonates powerfully in the annals of music history. When one thinks of blues, jazz, and soul, her voice emerges as a beacon of authenticity, raw emotion, and unparalleled talent. Behind that golden voice, however, lay a tapestry of triumphs and trials, dreams and despair, and a life lived on the razor's edge of fame's tumultuous landscape. But one would rarely guess that, if not for the stories from people who know her well. I want to thank God first for allowing me to come such a long way. I had no idea. Interestingly, her journey wasn't merely about chart-topping hits or awards. It was a narrative shaped by the era she lived in, the challenges she faced both personally and professionally, and the undying spirit with which she met them. As listeners, we've been graced with the emotive power of her voice, but how much do we truly know about the woman behind such classics as At Last and Tell Mama? Born as James Etta Hawkins in 1938 in Los Angeles, she was introduced to the world of music at an incredibly young age. Her gospel-soaked voice had the rare ability to move people, transcending barriers and touching souls. Yet, what most don't realize is that the very foundation of her existence was marred by mysteries and ambiguities. With a 14-year-old mother and an unknown father, young James Etta's life was set on a path of uncertainty from the outset. This was an era of seismic social and political changes, with the aftershocks of the Great Depression still being felt, and the looming shadows of the civil rights movement just on the horizon. In such times, what chance did a young African-American girl, born out of wedlock, truly have? Shockingly for Etta, music wasn't just a passion, it was an escape, a refuge. From the confines of her tumultuous childhood, where she was moved from one caretaker to another, music was the constant, the anchor. By the age of five, she was already making waves in the local gospel scene, her prodigious talent evident to all who heard her. It was clear, she was destined for greatness. But the road to stardom is rarely straightforward. Behind the velvet curtains and beneath the spotlight's glow, there lies a world rife with challenges. The music industry of the 1950s and 60s was a juggernaut, often ruthless and always demanding. For a young artist like Etta, the pressures were immense. She had to navigate the treacherous waters of racial prejudice, the expectations of her record labels, and the personal demons that often accompany genius. Yet for every challenge she faced, Etta James met it with a resilience that became as legendary as her voice, overcoming addiction, facing down personal and professional betrayals, and constantly reinventing her musical style to stay relevant in an ever-evolving industry. She became an emblem of persistence and perseverance. She was a force of nature, a woman who lived her life with unapologetic intensity. Etta's earliest years, unfortunately, did not mirror the radiant glow of her future fame. Abandoned by her mother, Dorothy Hawkins, a young teenager at the time of Etta's birth, she never truly knew the identity of her father, though he was rumored to be a famous pool player at the time. Raised primarily by caregivers and family friends, the stability young James Etta needed was elusive. However, amid these turbulent beginnings, her voice emerged as a sanctuary, a haven both for herself and those lucky enough to hear it. Her gospel roots anchored her in the world of music, with the St. Paul Baptist Church in Los Angeles playing a pivotal role. It was here, under the tutelage of the renowned James Earl Hines, that Etta began to truly hone her craft. As she belted out gospel tunes with the fervor and soul of someone far beyond her years, it became evident that her voice was her destiny. By the tender age of 12, she formed a trio with two other girls. They named themselves the Creolettes. Interestingly, it was around this time that she adopted the stage name Etta James, a nod to the Creolettes. The trio began to gain local attention, their harmonies captivating audiences around Los Angeles. Their renditions were not just confined to gospel, they dabbled in doo-wop, a style rapidly gaining popularity in the 50s. Johnny Otis, a name synonymous with rhythm and blues during that era, chanced upon the young trio. Recognizing the raw talent in their voices, especially Etta's, he became instrumental in their first recording. Under his guidance, the group recorded Dance With Me, Henry, a reworked version of Hank Ballard's Work With Me, Annie. Etta was merely 15 when the song catapulted to the top of the R&B charts, marking her first brush with fame. However, the journey was not devoid of pitfalls. As her star began to rise, challenges mounted. One of the most harrowing was her battle with substance abuse. 
At an age where most teenagers grapple with the throes of adolescence, Etta found herself ensnared in the perilous world of narcotics. This addiction was not just a fleeting phase, it was an albatross around her neck, an unwelcome companion that lingered for decades. Moreover, she often spoke of the loneliness that accompanied her early fame. The glitzy world of music with its adoring fans and sold-out shows often hid the isolation that artists like Etta felt. In numerous interviews, she would recount nights where the applause of the audience would be replaced by the deafening silence of her hotel room. Additionally, Etta's quest for love and acceptance perhaps stemming from her tumultuous childhood, saw her embroiled in a series of relationships. Many were marred by volatility, mirroring the passion and intensity she brought to her music. These relationships, often with fellow musicians, added layers to her already complex life tapestry. As the 1950s progressed, so did Etta's musical prowess. Collaborating with luminaries like Harvey Fuqua, she ventured beyond doo-wop, embracing the burgeoning soul genre. This period also marked her affiliation with the Chess Records label, a relationship that would yield some of her most iconic tracks in the years to come. By the late 1950s, the musical landscape of America was evolving. With the birth of rock and roll and the growing popularity of soul music, a shift was evident. Chess Records, a Chicago-based record label, sat at the epicenter of this transformation. Known for its roster of legendary blues and R&B artists, including Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, and Chuck Berry, Chess Records was more than a label. It was an institution. When Etta James joined this label, it wasn't just a professional decision, it was destiny calling. Interestingly, the Chess brothers, Leonard and Phil, had an innate knack for recognizing talent. And when they saw Etta perform, they knew they had a gem in their hands. The raw emotion, the soul, the sheer power of her voice was unparalleled. They were eager to harness this raw energy and introduce Etta to a broader audience. In her initial years with Chess, Etta's style began to metamorphose. While she had dabbled in various genres previously, at Chess, she began to blend them seamlessly, creating a unique sound. This sound, a fusion of blues, R&B, and gospel, was the hallmark of her early hits with the label. Her association with the label resulted in a slew of hits. Tracks like All I Could Do Was Cry, My Dearest Darling, and Trust In Me not only charted but also showcased her versatility. Whether it was the pain of a broken heart or the euphoria of newfound love, Etta captured the gamut of human emotion with her voice. Moreover, the 1960s, a decade marked by social and cultural upheaval, also played a role in shaping Etta's music. The civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, and the burgeoning feminist wave. All these monumental events left an indelible mark on artists of the era. Etta was no exception. Her music, especially the tracks she churned out during this decade, echoed the sentiments of a generation yearning for change. However, her journey with Chess Records wasn't devoid of challenges. While the label did provide her with a platform, it also pigeonholed her to a certain extent. The Chess Brothers, in their quest to market Etta, sometimes nudged her towards a more pop-oriented sound, often sidelining her bluesy roots. Tracks like Pushover and Two Sides to Every Story were clear departures from the raw, gritty sound Etta was known for. On top of that, the world of music in the 1960s was predominantly male-dominated. As a female artist, Etta had to grapple with inherent biases and sexism. There were instances when she wasn't given her due, overshadowed by her male counterparts. But Etta, with her indomitable spirit, refused to be sidelined. She carved a niche for herself, breaking barriers and setting benchmarks. Her relationship with fellow chess artist Harvey Fuqua was also instrumental during this phase. Fuqua, a seasoned musician, provided Etta with invaluable insights. Their duets, including the hit, If I Can't Have You, were a testament to their musical camaraderie. The two shared more than just musical notes. They shared a bond, a mutual respect that transcended the confines of a recording studio. In the latter half of the 1960s, Etta's association with the Fame Studios in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, led to some of her most iconic tracks. Songs like Tell Mama and I'd Rather Go Blind were not just hits, they were anthems. They captured the zeitgeist of the era resonating with audiences across the globe. While her association with Chess Records was pivotal, it was also a period of introspection for Etta. As the 1970s dawned, she began to reevaluate her musical choices, yearning to return to her roots. The subsequent chapters of her life would see her do just that, rekindling her love for pure, unadulterated blues. 
As the 1970s dawned, Etta James faced a whirlwind of emotions. The world around her was changing rapidly, with new music genres emerging and societal changes shaping the global landscape. But for Etta, this decade would be marked by profound personal challenges and a desperate search for self-redemption. Shockingly, as her star rose, Etta found herself embroiled in the clutches of drug addiction. It wasn't a secret that the music industry of the time was riddled with substance abuse, and many artists found themselves succumbing to the pressures of fame and the fast-paced life that came with it. Etta was no exception. Her addiction began innocuously with casual usage here and there. But over time, it became a crutch. The highs of the stage were often replaced by the lows of reality, and drugs became an escape from the overwhelming pressures and traumas of her past. It was a way to numb the pain, to forget the hardships, and to momentarily live in a world devoid of troubles. The spiral was fast and devastating. There were missed shows, canceled tours, and studio recordings that never saw the light of day. Her relationship with her family became strained, and the once unbreakable bond with her son, Danto, began to show signs of wear. The mother who once sang him lullabies now grappled with demons that threatened to tear their relationship apart. Interestingly, the music industry, while being a catalyst for her descent into addiction, also provided moments of respite. The studio became a sanctuary, a place where Etta could momentarily forget her struggles and immerse herself in the world of melodies and lyrics. And it was here, amidst the cacophony of instruments and the hum of recording equipment, that Etta found moments of clarity. Her tracks from this period, while not as commercially successful as her earlier hits, were raw and visceral. They were a reflection of her struggles, her vulnerabilities, and her desperate yearning for redemption. Songs like I've Been Loving You Too Long and Feel Like Breaking Up Somebody's Home resonated with a depth of emotion that was palpable. Moreover, as the decade progressed, there were attempts at rehabilitation. Etta, with the support of her loved ones, tried to break free from the chains of addiction. There were periods of sobriety, moments where it seemed like the old Etta, the vibrant, vivacious singer with a zest for life, was making a comeback. During one of these moments of clarity, she reconnected with her son, Danto. Their bond, which had been strained due to her addiction, began to heal. Danto, who was coming into his own as a musician, became an anchor for Etta. Their shared love for music became a bridge, mending the gaps that had formed over the years. The latter part of the 1970s also saw Etta exploring new musical avenues. While her roots were firmly entrenched in blues and R&B, she began to dabble in jazz and rock. Collaborations with renowned artists of the era provided a fresh perspective, and Etta's sound began to evolve. However, the battle with addiction was far from over. Relapses were common, and with each setback, the road to recovery became even more arduous. But Etta, with her indomitable spirit, refused to give in. She fought not just for herself, but for her family, her fans, and her legacy. Intriguingly, as the 1980s approached, a new chapter awaited Etta, a chapter that would see her rise like a phoenix, reclaiming her place in the annals of music history and proving to the world that talent coupled with resilience can overcome the darkest of storms. The 1980s ushered in a new era for music, characterized by evolving genres, emerging icons, and technological advancements. But for Etta James, the decade marked a triumphant return, a rekindling of her passion, and a reclamation of her esteemed position in the music industry. As the new decade dawned, Etta's past struggles became a distant memory, overshadowed by a newfound zest for life and music. With her unique voice and unmatched talent, she began to navigate the changing musical landscape, carving a niche for herself amidst the synthesizers and electronic beats that dominated the era. Interestingly, her earlier battles had given her music a richer texture. Her voice, always soulful, now carried with it the weight of experience, the echoes of pain, and the promise of redemption. It was during this time that she released albums that, while not chart-topping, were critically acclaimed for their depth and authenticity. Albums like Seven Year Itch and Stickin' to My Guns showcased a mature Etta, an artist who had evolved but had retained the essence of her artistry. One of the significant milestones of the 1980s for Etta was her collaboration with renowned musicians and producers. These collaborations not only expanded her musical horizons but also introduced her to a newer, younger audience. The infusion of fresh perspectives rejuvenated her sound and the fusion of the old, with the newly created tracks that were both nostalgic and contemporary. Moreover, during this period, Etta began to receive recognition not just for her current work, but also for her contributions over the decades. 
awards and honors started pouring in, celebrating her legacy and acknowledging her indelible mark on the world of music. It was a time of celebration, of looking back at a journey marked by highs and lows, triumphs and challenges. One poignant moment during this decade was when Etta was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1993. This honor, a testament to her enduring influence, was a validation of her talent and her resilience. The induction ceremony saw her perform some of her most iconic tracks, evoking nostalgia and earning her a standing ovation from the esteemed audience. On top of that, the 1980s also saw a deeper exploration of her roots. Etta returned to gospel music, the genre that had nurtured her during her formative years. Albums like The Gospel Soul of Etta James bore testimony to her versatility and her deep-seated connection with spiritual music. Additionally, while the professional accolades were pouring in, Etta's personal life also witnessed moments of joy and reconciliation. Her relationship with her children, especially Danto, solidified, with the two often collaborating on musical projects. The bond once strained due to her struggles was now stronger than ever with both mother and son drawing strength from each other. It's worth noting that while the 1980s marked a resurgence in Etta's career, it also saw her mentor and guide younger artists. Her story, marked by both success and struggle, served as an inspiration. Etta became a beacon of hope, a living testament to the fact that with determination and passion, one could overcome the most significant challenges. Many budding artists looked up to her, seeking guidance, drawing inspiration, and hoping to emulate her success. By the end of the 1980s, Etta had not only reclaimed her position in the music industry, but had also solidified her legacy as one of the most influential artists of her time. From chart-topping hits in the 1950s to soulful tracks in the 1980s, her journey was a testament to her talent, resilience, and undying passion for music. Etta's music was not just a reflection of her times, it transcended eras, touching the hearts of listeners across generations. Her enduring legacy is a testament to her unparalleled talent, authenticity, and the timeless appeal of her voice. Interestingly, while Etta's songs narrated stories of love, heartbreak, and resilience, they also chronicled the societal changes and movements that shaped the world. From the civil rights movement to the feminist wave, her music often resonated with the larger narrative of change, echoing the sentiments and aspirations of the masses. Her influence was multifaceted. On one hand, her soulful renditions inspired countless artists across genres, from soul and R&B to rock and pop. On the other hand, her personal journey, marked by trials and tribulations, became a beacon of hope for many, exemplifying the power of perseverance and self-belief. Moreover, Etta's ability to seamlessly blend genres set her apart. While she began her career firmly rooted in gospel and soul, she never shied away from experimenting. Whether it was rock, jazz, or blues, Etta lent her unique touch to every genre, creating a sound that was distinctly her own. This versatility ensured that her music appealed to a diverse audience, making her a household name across continents. One of the key aspects of Etta's legacy was her ability to connect with her audience emotionally. Her songs, often deeply personal, struck a chord with listeners, making them feel as if she was narrating their own stories. This emotional connection, combined with her powerful voice, ensured that her songs remained etched in the collective memory, being passed down from one generation to the next. As a result, even decades after their release, tracks like At Last and I'd Rather Go Blind continue to be staples at weddings, parties, and other celebrations. Their timeless appeal is a testament to Etta's genius. Her ability to capture the essence of human emotions and translate them into melodies that touch the soul. Additionally, her legacy also lives on through the countless artists she inspired. Icons like Beyonce, Adele, and Amy Winehouse have often cited Etta as a significant influence, crediting her with shaping their musical sensibilities. Many of them have even paid tribute to the legend by covering her songs, introducing Etta's magic to newer audiences. On top of that, her story has also made its way to the silver screen. The 2008 film Cadillac Records, which chronicles the rise and fall of Chess Records, features Beyonce Knowles portraying Etta. The film, while focusing on the broader narrative of the record label, also delves deep into Etta's journey, introducing her tumultuous life and indomitable spirit to moviegoers around the world. Moreover, institutions and organizations worldwide have honored Etta for her contributions to the world of music. Apart from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, she's been inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame, further cementing her status as one of the greatest artists of all time. 
While awards and honors are a testament to her talent, Etta's real legacy lies in the impact she has had on people. Fans from all walks of life, irrespective of age, gender, or nationality, have found solace in her music. Her songs have been a source of comfort during trying times, a soundtrack to celebrations, and a medium to express emotions that words often fail to capture. Yet, despite her immense success, Etta remained grounded. Her humility and authenticity endeared her to fans and fellow artists alike. Her willingness to share her struggles, both through her music and interviews, made her relatable, turning her into an icon that people looked up to, not just for her music, but for her spirit. Overall, Etta James's journey, marked by numerous peaks and valleys, is emblematic of the struggle that many artists face in the limelight. It's an age-old tale. Prodigious talent meets a world filled with temptations and challenges. For Etta, these challenges range from battling addiction to navigating the tumultuous world of the music industry. Interestingly, it was during the late 1960s, a decade characterized by significant socio-political change, that Etta's personal struggles began to intensify the world around her was shifting. Civil rights, the Vietnam War, and the feminist movement were all reaching their zenith. In tandem, the music industry was undergoing its transformation, with genres like rock and psychedelic taking the forefront. Against this backdrop, the singer faced her demons. Her addiction issues, which began as a means to cope with the pressures of stardom, soon spiraled, threatening to derail her illustrious career. The music industry, with its relentless pace and often unforgiving nature, has seen many talents succumb to such challenges. Etta's battles with substance abuse, intertwined with her professional hurdles, mirrored the struggles of many artists of her time. Moreover, while her voice remained constant, her reputation began to suffer. The once revered star found herself battling not just personal demons, but also a notoriously fickle industry. As newer genres gained popularity, and as her personal issues began overshadowing her talent, Etta faced the very real threat of being relegated to the annals of history, remembered fondly but not relevant. However, what sets Etta James apart is her resilience. Despite the odds, she refused to be defined by her challenges. Instead, she channeled her experiences, both good and bad, into her music. Songs like I'd Rather Go Blind not only showcase her unparalleled vocal prowess, but also offer a glimpse into her soul, laying bare the raw emotions she grappled with. That aside, Etta's journey to sobriety, while fraught with challenges, is a testament to her indomitable spirit. Her return to the music scene in the 1980s, after her stint in rehab, marked not just her comeback but also her metamorphosis. This period saw her exploring different genres, collaborating with newer artists, and redefining her sound. It was a renaissance of sorts, proving that talent, when combined with grit and determination, can overcome even the most formidable challenges. Her story serves as a beacon of hope, particularly for artists battling similar demons. The narrative of her life, marked by highs and lows, serves as a reminder that while talent is a gift, resilience is a choice. Etta chose to fight, to rise, and to reclaim her place, ensuring that her legacy wasn't just about her voice, but also her spirit. In essence, Etta James's story is one of redemption. It's a tale of a woman who, despite the odds, chose to rise. Her music, a reflection of her soul, serves as a testament to her journey, capturing the myriad emotions she experienced. Her legacy, therefore, is not just about the song she sang, but also the life she lived. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.